Welcome to the Business Success Strategies with Adrian McLean. This is a 30-minute interview with successful business people who have been able to achieve amazing results with growing a business. Business Success Strategies is proudly sponsored by The Speaker's Practice and AdrianMcLean.com, helping business owners with marketing and promotions with a specialty with public speaking. Enjoy today's Business Success Strategies interview. joining us for the Business Success Strategies interview. The aim of this 30-minute interview is to find out from highly successful experts approaches for marketing and growing a business. It's wonderful today to have Scotty Schindler join us. Welcome, Scotty. Hey, Gowan. Good. Good, thank you. Scotty Schindler is today's recognised among Australia's leading entrepreneurs after three decades of hard work, day in and day out, in his business career. Scott retired in 2017 at the age of 46 years and immediately turned his attention towards the service of others in business. Scott has an insight built on real and enduring experience acquired over three decades in business. Scott is renowned in Australia and beyond for his thought leadership. The topic for our interview today is goal setting and achieving. So thank you so much for being with us, Scott, and it's great to be able to have the opportunity to uh, ask you a bit about goal setting and actually actually achieving those goals that we, uh, we really want to uh, get done. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's great to be here. Thanks for the invite. So tell us a bit about uh, your interests. And uh, we've spoken before about how your, uh, one of your passions is goal setting. So tell us a bit about, about how, you, how you have achieved what you have and really implemented some of these goals. Yeah, well... Goal setting has always been a favourite topic because I was I was introduced to it really early. Um, so when I started selling insurance, the very first thing they did when we went through the training course was started on this goal setting approach. You know, we want to achieve in life and all sorts of things. And that was me as an 18 year old. So I was introduced to it really, really early. And then when you actually go out in the field, because it was a, an American insurance company, it was all based around, you know, American methodologies of of um, we now call it micromanagement, but where you set goals for your hourly activities, how many people you're going to talk to, and your, your closing rates, and all that sort of stuff. So, that goal setting for me has been embedded ever since I was, I guess, started in business. So, yeah, achieving them and and going to that next point for me, I took it for granted because I just started doing it, and it's always been part of my DNA ever since I started working. So, yeah, it's it's been good fun. Um, I've got a lot of, it is one of the favourite things I do now and it's, it's part of my DNA. It's part of what I do every day, all day, uh, as, is set goals. Yes, yeah. So let's get started. Many people find it easy to set goals but find it difficult to achieve them. Is there an approach to setting goals so that they are achievable? Yeah. Um, look, I, I'm a big fan of results-based goals rather than, um, sorry, action-based goals rather than result-based goals. So in other words, how do I describe that? So let's give an example if I was, let's say one day I decided to get fitter and I set a goal to lose some weight, which is great, maybe lose 5, 10, 20 kilos, whatever it is. Um, but really that's just a goal around a result. That's an output or an outcome that you're setting a goal on, which is great. But really if you set a goal on your activities, which is, for example, well, I'm going to get up and walk for half an hour every day before work and walk, half an hour every day after work. You can probably achieve that quite easily and the, and the result of that will be to be fitter and healthier and, and actually lose those kilos. So that, that's why I'm a big fan of you know, your action-based goals rather than your result-based goals because you can, you, can you can easily achieve your actions um, as opposed to the results. And there's no guarantee of results. Not only that, sometimes result-based goals can be a limiter. So you might set a goal at 10 kilos, but if you're really fit, you don't want it to be a stopper because you might have the chance to become even fitter again. Yes. You know, so uh, as an example, that I set a goal to do triathlons. And my first goal 
was just to finish a triathlon. Whereas if I had to said, oh, I want to win a triathlon, it's a completely different sort of goal. I just wanted to go through the process of the exercise and the effort required because I knew if I could do a triathlon, even though I was only a small club level, I knew I'd get a result, which was I'd be fitter. Yeah. So it's, it's – and I think action-based goals are best. But you know, you're right, goals are easy to sort of throw out there in the ethos and talk about, but they're really – unless you – Unless they go to that next phase, which they become a proper decision, they really just talk. So, and I think um, there's a there's a difference between talking about stuff and actually setting a goal and doing stuff. Well, I like your approach about action based goals uh, rather than result based goals. Most, I mean, people often uh, make result based goals and don't know how to achieve them. But action-based goals makes it very real. Uh, for instance, I've got a Fitbit, and I, I try. I my goal is to walk ten thousand steps a day, and Perfect. It, it's a uh, it's achievable. Yeah. Um, so uh, so that's a great approach, uh, and and I suppose you can convert it into business uh, action goals too. So absolutely. What, what would be an example there? Well, yeah, so, you know, let's say you had a, um, I'll go back to, um, I'll, I'll use a sales analogy if that's okay. Yeah. So let's say you had a, a goal of increasing your sales and let's say, for want of a better figure, you were doing a million dollars a year in, in sales or revenues or something like that. So let's just work with a nice round figure of a million dollars. But you wanted to increase that by 10 or 20 or 30%. So it's really easy then to go, okay, well, what I need to do is increase my activities by 10, 20, or 30%. And if you look at that and go, well, hang on a minute, I'm making 20 phone calls a day now and I'm at capacity, well, what do I need to do? So then you need to look at your actions, what you're doing, um, so that way you can micromanage into the amount of calls you're doing an hour or a day or how effective your calls are. Um, you know, whether it's um, like a nice simple one would be, Maybe at the end of every day, I'm going to just make one more phone call. So when I think I'm finished, I'm going to pick up the phone at five past five instead of going home and make one more phone call. And if you do that, you know, there's, let's call it 40 weeks a year effective work weeks. You know, you're going to do five days. You've got 200 more phone calls a year you're going to do. And just that one action alone could actually lead to that without even doing anything extra. You're just doing one extra phone call a day and that can help your bottom line. So um, bringing it back into business and your activities around business is, is not that hard, you know. So you can't guarantee the growth of 10, 20, 30%. But what you can make sure you do is the little actions that make it count at the end of the day. Oh, wow, that's a fantastic approach. So is it a good idea to have lots of goals or just set a few, a few goals? Oh, look, I've always had lots of goals. So I'm going to be a fan of saying, yeah, set lots of them. <laughs> but the, the, unless you've clearly defined what you want to be in, in one year, three year, five year, and I'll always run with 10, unless you clearly define what you want to look like as that person. So let's say you're, you're, you're a 25-year-old and you're, in, you're out there in the workforce and you think, well, what do I want to look like as a 35-year-old? What do I want to look like as a 45-year-old? And right now you might be in your 40s and you're thinking, well, what do I want to look like in retirement? What's that look like for me as a, as a 50 or a 55 or a 60-year-old? What does it look like? And you need to clearly look at that. So that way all the other goals you do, the micro goals, whether they're the yearly, the monthly, six-monthly, daily, they're all tying into what that long-term goal is. So I, I'm a big believer in all the goals. Um, but there is a difference between uh, just, just talking about stuff and actually making it a goal, making a decision that that is what I want. Um, and some goals... You know, like, for, can I give you an example here of uh, a mixture of long-term yeah. and, in other words, five or ten-year goals and a yearly goal? Yeah. So I always had a goal that every year I would do one thing towards my financial future. It could be buying, it could be selling, it could be investing, it could be doing whatever. So every year I wanted to make sure that I did something towards my financial future. Oh. So I always knew that as a, as a uh, I didn't have to set it. It was just there every single year. Because I knew if I did that over the course of 10 years or 15 years or 20 years, more often than not, I'd get it right. But I might have over 20 years done 15 good things. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. And, and 15 transactions that have gone towards creating wealth and the person I wanted to be in my 40s. So yes. I've, I've done that for a long time. So that's, that's an example of how long-term mixed with 
a midterm goal, like a yearly goal, that's not even a monthly or a short term goal, a daily or weekly, can help actually approach. So I, I'm a big believer in all of them. You need your you need your micros, you need your midterm, and you have to have your long term goal, or else you really don't know what you're working towards. What what do you want to be in five years time or ten years time? You know, is it and, and are you doing the actions required to get there? Yeah. Well, you gave a great example there of an action-based goal, long-term goal, which is because uh, I was thinking, well, what's a, a what's a action-based long-term goal look like? Uh, and so that that's a really great example, uh, making one big financial uh, decision per year. Uh, so that's a yeah. So I can see how that approach works. Yeah. So um, are there? Is there another example of a long term goal? Uh, yeah, sure. Goal? Well, let me go with a let me go with another one that's um, this time around health. Yeah. Okay. So that's the same thing, right? So you know I. And, and you know, the reality is the reason why sometimes you set these goals and they become life-changing decisions and part of your DNA is because of how things went bad or things weren't good at the time. So I, you know, in, in my late 20s, I was, I was fat. I wasn't very healthy at all. So I decided from then on in that I was always going to um, make sure I looked after my health. Okay, so I, had a, I didn't just set a goal. I almost had an epiphany. And it was a life-changing moment where I got, no, no, no. So it's actually beyond goals. And, but every year what would happen is, you know, I'd go on the conference runs, for example, and, and they were always, you know, call it the award season because I ran real estate software, which meant, you know, I was, I was at eating, I was standing around talking, then I was up till two o'clock in the morning, partying and celebrating with all the award winners. And, you know, why not? You, just, you, you just end up putting on weight. It just, it's the way it works in the corporate world. So you have to make sure that you go, hang on a minute, look, I know I did that for a few weeks, but I've got to come back to being healthy because there's no point going to work and, and thinking about, you know, your wealth when you're 40 or 50 or 60, if you're not going to be there to enjoy it. Yes. So you keep coming back to these action-based goals of, no, I've got, to, I've got to make sure that I do something over the next few weeks to counterbalance that to, to bring back into the, like this healthy routine before it overtakes me. Yeah. So yeah, there's an example there for health. For health, yeah. Oh, fantastic. And was one of yours uh, doing triathlons? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I sat down to myself and I wasn't happy, right? And, and, and I, and, and you know, for me, I was, I was overweight. And I, you know, maybe there's people that are more overweight, but that's okay. For me, I wasn't where I wanted to be. I was, I went into a menswear store and I bought a size 38 pants and I went, that's it. I mean, that was my, I'm not doing that ever again. So I went, well, what's the, what's the healthiest and fittest sport I can think of? And I wasn't really surfing at the time. So I was out of the water all the time because I was working. All I was doing was working. So I picked triathlons. I went, I'll do a triathlon. And I kept a diary on it. And I, I made this little diary, had my goals. And what I did was I would do... I would do these little short runs and I would do a 200 meter swim in the pool, which is like nothing. I mean, really these are little, but I was unfit. I, I really didn't have the ability to go any further. I mean, that for me was exercise. Yeah. It was big exercise. You know, I get out of the pool after 200 meters, I'd be sweating, I'd be going, oh. <laughs> And then I, I, I just set these little micro goals to improve, improve, improve until I managed to do my first triathlon. And it took me, oh, was it two years? It was about two years anyway, before I actually got to do a triathlon because I just wasn't fit enough or able enough. Yeah. All, I, all I would have done was hurt myself and, and bounced. So, and I ended up going right down to 70 kilos and size 30 pants, which is, I'm heavier than that now, but I'm comfortable with where I am. Yeah. You know, so I ended up getting right into it because the, 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 the funny thing when you set goals and you start to achieve, it becomes a drug. You want to achieve more. Yeah. And uh, so for health, I ended up as healthy as I've ever been. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. Well, the, the goals are... Uh are really having a great impact on everything it sounds so health and, and it does and, and if i give you a parallel to that I set a goal to do an iron man triathlon which is the big one right? right so the big iron man triathlon just to give you an idea it's like a in round numbers it's a it's a four kilometer swim it's a 180 kilometer bike ride so you think we can go for 180 kilometers right yeah. and then you do a full marathon run at the end it's 40 odd kilometers long Okay. Gosh. I always set a goal to do that. And I look, I never managed to do it. I did two half ones. So I missed that goal. 
But it's not the point. The, the, the point of setting goals is about the journey and what you achieve along the way. So I managed to get the health that I wanted. I managed to get all the things I wanted out of setting those goals in the end, even though I missed that big goal. And I, I, I sort of regret it. I really wish I had it done it. But, you know, all of a sudden my business kicked in a re-net and I just didn't have the time or capacity to keep doing what I did. Yeah. But I, I managed to achieve so many things on the journey, yeah. which I, I, mean, I really did achieve my goal anyway, which was originally the long term was to be healthier. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Uh, so uh, it's easy to get um, roadblocks come along in this process of trying to achieve your goals. Maybe it's easier with action-based goals, but still, uh, still, I think they, they would happen. What's your advice about handling roadblocks? Well, I, they just expect them. They're always going to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And that also brings in line with the exact reason why you need to have the long-term goals. You know, who do you want to be and where do you see yourself in five or ten years' time realistically as a person, as an individual, you know, for your health and your wealth and things like that, you know. So that way all these things that happen and all these distractions and erosion that happen along the way, whether it's because of something that you did accidentally or something that's come from a, a third party or some external force, is, yeah. they're always going to happen. You have to expect them. Yeah. You know, you just... They're there. And, and so roadblocks, you have to expect them. And... and and what that means is you then just create more micro goals around those because you've got your long-term goals. So every time you get a setback or a roadblock, turn a roadblock into a stepping stone instead. I mean, make it part of, okay, well, I've learned from that now, but off I go because I'm going to continue on the same journey. You're still on the same course. you just got to go around it, you know, just like driving on holidays when you, all of a sudden the road's got roadworks and you've got to go take a detour. Well, it's just a detour. It's not a stopper um, unless you want it to be but really they shouldn't be. If you've got clear identity of who you want to be, you look, there's no such a thing as a roadblock. Although they are there, but they shouldn't stop you. So it does become a mindset, uh, yeah. like the, the approach that you take, like the roadblock in some way, yeah. and, and it's a mindset about how you, uh, how you handle, handle it. Yeah, exactly. So if I go back to the investments, I did some investments that went south. They went bad and I lost money, you know. But it also made me make clearer decisions on what my investment strategy was. You know, so when I lost $100,000 on one investment, I went, well, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> it didn't stop me wanting to be who I wanted to be. It just meant I need a new strategy. And that new strategy was actually far better than the old strategy anyway. So it wasn't a roadblock. I mean, admittedly it was. I mean, I mean, I, I don't like losing money and losing a hundred. And in fact, I had two of them go south. So, you know, nearly $150,000 in two separate investments. But it didn't matter. Next year, I needed to set a new goal of what I wanted to do. Not so much a new goal. I was always going to do it. But I needed to look at the goals differently of what my investment strategy was because that one didn't work. I certainly wasn't doing that again. So let me change my strategy. Yeah. But my goal never changed. The outcome was always going to be there that I wanted to be financially independent. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's why having the long-term goals is so important. Yeah, and, uh, well, the, yeah, the roadblocks are opportunities for, for growth and, and um, uh, learning about things. As you said, you, you, you changed your course, so it, it's, a, it's a learning time, I suppose. Yeah, and, and if I can give you one of my mantras, I got taught this, right? I didn't, I'm not a philosopher. I didn't come up with these things. I got taught them, right? And one of, my, one of my early mentors said to me, every disadvantage has the seed of greater or equivalent advantage. What I added to that was you just got to find it, right? So over the years, you just learn to find the advantages out of it. Every disadvantage has the seed of greater or equivalent advantage. And it just does. And what that advantage is at the time, you don't know. Because at the moment you're looking at, you're calling a roadblock or you're calling a, something to come along and, and, and affected you in a way that you're going, oh, why bother? Or, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. Or that's, that's out. But, you know, what's the advantage in that? What's the, what's the equal or equivalent advantage in something that's turned up or something that's affected you? And it's there. You just have to find it. It's always there. Oh, that's a, that's a beautiful mantra to... Uh... To, 
to think about when these things happen. So uh, moving on to our next question, what's your approach to actually focusing on a goal and achieving it? Well, I guess my approach to focusing on a goal is it really comes down to that clear decision that that's what you want to do. And then the focusing and the, um, the effort required to achieve it is much easier. But it's, it really comes down to the decision. In fact, some decisions or some goals that you make are so strong and more epiphanies rather than a goal. I mean, they, they, they become life-changing decisions that you make. And they're more epiphanies. They've actually gone to another level. But, you know, if you set a goal and you make it that a firm decision, well, then you, it's actually not hard to achieve it. Like I, I've got friends at the moment that next year have, they've set a goal to go around Australia. Okay, so they want to go around Australia in a caravan. And I think they'll achieve it because they've already started to buy the caravan, they've bought the four-wheel drive, and they're doing all the necessary things to do it. And they probably don't even call it a goal. It's just some bucket list thing or something they're talking about. But they've actually made a decision, and what they're doing is now lining everything up based around that goal of what they want to do. So their chances of achieving it are a lot higher now because they've made the decision and they're doing the necessary actions to achieve that goal. And in business, is the same thing. I mean, you just start to go hang on, I made the decision and this is what I do. So when you turn up to work every day and there's noise everywhere, there's phone calls, there's emails, there's social media, there's staff, there's clients, it's like, ah, what do I do? Well, you can help make the right decisions based on the most effective things you can do today to achieve what it is you need to achieve. And, and there'll be 10 things you didn't do, but there'll be the 10 things you did do that go towards what you want to achieve. Yeah. So focus is actually quite easy once you've made the decision. Uh, that's a that's a great point because it's the decision uh, actually really internalizing the decision that makes it almost real before you've started. You, you, you sort of if you internalize it, it really uh, uh, helps you to to go for it. Yeah, it helps you avoid the noise. So you know you've got people out there that will tell you that that you can't achieve whatever it is. You know. Um, so if I go back to the triathlon days, if I, if I told people I was going to do a half Ironman when I first started, no one would have believed me. In fact, I didn't even set that as the goal anyway. I just wanted to do triathlons because I thought it was the, the fittest of the sport. But once you're focused, all those other distractions and things like that are simply just like water off a duck's back. You don't even notice it. it just, it's just noise on the side because you're focused over here yeah. and you don't even notice it. And um, so, yeah, the decision and that focus... Um, it's just, it's not that hard once you do it. And everyone's done it already. You've done it before. Everyone's done it before at some stage in their life in multiple times, okay, in multiple occasions. It's just a matter of setting the right goals for, you know, who you want to be in 5, 10, 15 years' time. Who is it that you want to be next year? How do you want to, how do you want everyone to know you next year? And then everything you do this year is based around that. All the decisions you make, all the micro decisions, all the monthly, daily, hourly, or all about how you want to be in 2020. Yeah. So, yeah, easy easy to focus on what you want to be. Yeah. So, finally, what's a business strategy that you recommend? In what way? Um, well, I suppose, uh, uh, I suppose as our topic is, is goal setting, um, What's right. the strategy for, for goal setting and for growing our business uh, that, that you can recommend that really has helped? So for all the business coaches out there, if anyone's about to hear this, once <laughs> you pick yourself up off the floor when I say, I never had a business plan, <laughs> I was very bad at business planning, right? I was more of a, a go-getter and a go-achiever than I was business planning. But in saying that, though, I, had a, I did have a time away from, and I, from the business and I'd get A4 books and I'd just draw all over it and write down what my goals were and I'd write down, well, in a year's time, if I hire more staff, what's that look like and what are the expenses going to look like in a year's time? And, and, and so I guess I did do some business planning. But if I had to present it to someone, I'd be terrible. It'd be <laughs> absolutely terrible. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really big on the whole business planning. So, but as a strategy is to sit down from time to time and look at what 
the business needs to be where it wants to be in a year's time. And if it keeps going on the same trajectory, well, what's it going to look like in a year's time? Even if you don't have any impact or you don't do anything towards it, it's going to be going on a trajectory and hopefully it's up. If it's down, well, then you need to make some serious decisions. Okay, but if it's just going to be the same, well, is that where you want it to be? And it may be. Some people are just happy to have a job, even though it's their own business. But other people are going, no, no, I want to be, I want to be more successful. I want to achieve more. And it's about sitting down and actually, and I used to just get a, 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 um, a pen and a paper and just doodle stuff in it. And that was my, okay, what's it going to look like? And does that marry up to what I need to achieve? And if I get that, I've then got extra revenue over here. So I guess I did planning, but it was more goal setting. I, I did a lot of goal setting as opposed to planning. So as a strategy, sit down and do all the business goals, just like I was talking about your life goals, except you're doing it on the business that you may own or that you're a part of or the department you're in and things like that. Goal setting is all I did. No business plan, lots of goal setting in business. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, really, um, uh, a takeaway from, from all you've said is this, this concept of action goals. Uh, that, that's absolute gem. Thanks for that. <laughs> so would you like to just finish off by telling us about your business and, uh, and how you help uh, help people now and yeah. yeah well I um, at the moment I don't really have a business but I'm in the business of helping others at the moment so basically what happened was when I when I exited Renet and I guess went into retirement I was really enjoying it then people would start ringing me up going hey Scott can you come and help me and can you come and share some knowledge with me and I'm going sure I, I really like it I, I do enjoy standing up in front of people and sharing so that way they can have some success too and hopefully look even more success than I've had, you know, because I'm, I'm really just a normal person. There's some really, really smart people out there that can tap into some of this experience that I went on and go off and, and achieve some great things. And so that's happened in the last year. So I don't really have a business, but I guess at the moment I'm in the business of sharing the story and, and empowering others on their journey. And I am really, really enjoying that. Well, well, we're very excited to have you uh, as our closing keynote speaker at the Professional Services Marketing Conference because we're really wanting to hear all your uh, great advice. You've achieved so much that it's uh, it's a real honour to have you have you with us for the conference. Thank you. And you'll be helping lots uh, on that day. Yeah, there's lots of uh, lots of other good speakers there too. I'm looking forward to. You hearing everything they've got to share on you know, what their knowledge is and their journey they're going on. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Anyway, thank you so much, Scott, for your time and for taking us through your approach for goal setting because it's really a valuable way to help people in business or in life in general to move forward and uh, achieve the goals that they want to. So thank you so much for your time and advice. That's okay, it's my pleasure. Okay.